Happy, healthy, and holy new year. The quote for the day is, as of today, January 1st, for the first time ever, hindsight will actually be 2020. I also ask you to pray for the soul of Dawn Wells, Mary Ann from Gilligan's Island, my favorite TV show growing up. Uh, she survived by her husband, her children, and the rest. Today is this beautiful feast day of Mary, the mother of God. It is also the World Day of Prayer for Peace. So I encourage you every day this coming year to say the rosary every day for world peace, especially for peace in our own country as we go into this new year of 2021. And we are in the octave of Christmas, which means we're the eighth day of Christmas. And I've always enjoyed that true story that happened a week after Christmas in downtown San Francisco. Uh, the pastor of a church went out on the front lawn looking over the manger scene that was set up in front of the church when he noticed that the Christ child figure was missing. But that just then he turned to see a little boy with a red wagon coming down the street. And in the wagon was the figure of the infant Jesus. So the pastor walked up to the boy and said, well, young man, where did you pick up your passenger? I got him from here, from the church father. And why did you take him? The little boy replied, well, about a week before Christmas, I prayed to the little Lord Jesus. And I told him that if he would bring me a red wagon for Christmas, I would give him a ride around the block. That is a true story. Now, this beautiful feast day of Mary, the mother of God. Why do we call Mary the mother of God? Because her son, Jesus Christ, is Lord and God. When this title, Theotokos, the God bearer, was officially defined in the year 431, it was at the Council of Ephesus in modern day Turkey. Most ecumenical councils, you know, some of them lasted years. Vatican II lasted three years. This council lasted one day. The bishops gathered and said, yes, Jesus Christ is God. Mary gave birth to Jesus Christ. We can call her the mother of God. This was to defeat the heresy of Nestorius, the monk who said wrongly that Jesus was two persons, a human person and a divine person. And he said, no, you can't call Mary the mother of God because he believed falsely that Jesus was two persons. So Mary only gave birth to the human person, not to the divine person. But the church said, no, Jesus Christ is one person. He's a divine person who has a human nature and a divine nature, but united in the one person of Christ, who is the second person of the Blessed Trinity. So Christ is a divine person. And a mother doesn't give birth to a nature. She gives birth to a person. So the child that Mary gave birth to on that day in Bethlehem 2000 years ago is truly God and truly man the second person of the Blessed Trinity, we call Mary the mother of God. We see this explained in scripture, John chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's referring to the divinity of Christ. Our second reading today, Paul to the Galatians, at the fullness of time, God sent his son born of a woman. When Elizabeth saw Our Lady, she said, who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? That's using the word God. Who am I that the mother of God should come to me? And remember after Jesus rose from the dead, Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. So Jesus is truly God, the second person of the Blessed Trinity. Our Blessed Mother gave birth to him. Therefore, Mary is the mother of God. And as we begin this new year, I'd just like to end by giving you three suggestions on what we can do this coming year. Number one, grow in your devotion to St. Joseph. On December 8th, Pope Francis declared this year, from December 8th of 2020 to December 8th of 2021, the year of St. Joseph. So what should we do to grow in our devotion to St. Joseph? Well, first of all, read the papal letter about St. Joseph and why the Pope says we especially need uh, St. Joseph to watch over us, to pray for us, to protect the church in this day and age. 
And if you've never prayed the litany of St. Joseph, I would highly recommend it. The litany is a beautiful prayer. You can look it up online, the litany of St. Joseph. I encourage you to say that every day or at least once a week. And then get the book called Consecration to St. Joseph by Father Don Calloway. Consecration to St. Joseph will tell you how to learn and study about his life and then consecrate and entrust yourself to the loving care and intercession of St. Joseph. Plus, there's many other wonderful books about St. Joseph as well. And as far as music, you know, there's obviously not that many songs about St. Joseph, but I am sort of pleased to let you know that on my dad's four record albums that he made in Hollywood back in the 70s and 80s, there's about 40 songs, uh, Mary songs, more Mary songs, Mary songs three, and Jesus songs. On those, there are about 10 songs about St. Joseph. And in my, my personal, humble opinion, they are so beautiful. And so if you don't have my dad's CDs, stop by the office and pick them up as a gift for me and listen to his songs. I, would, I especially recommend a song called There Was a Man Called Joseph, Joseph's Song, uh, Joseph Was a Young Man, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, Joseph and His Mary. Again, he has such beautiful songs and they're really widely unknown, unfortunately, in the church today. But Again, that's a great way to increase your devotion to St. Joseph. So number one this year is consecrate and entrust yourself to St. Joseph. Learn more about him. The second recommendation for this coming year, read one book a week. It's not that difficult. I use audiobooks, and I, I usually try to do one to two books a week. And some of these are the, the greatest Catholic literature is available on Audible or audio CD or in book form. And so read and study one book a week this coming year on the faith. It could be the lives of the saints. It could be on sacred scripture. And there's so many wonderful books of Catholic literature as well. So make that as a goal. By the end of this year, read 50 books on your faith or listen to 50 books on your faith. It's not that difficult. When I wake up every morning, I put on the audio book and I have somebody reading to me for an hour as I'm getting ready. At night, about a half an hour of audiobooks. So again, a great way to grow in your love of God, your love of others, and your knowledge and love of the faith by reading or listening to one book a week. And lastly, number three, what's been very helpful to me this past year, like especially working out in the garden, is that I, on my phone, I listen to sermons and homilies and talks on YouTube and other good sources. And there are so many incredible talks and sermons and homilies. Bishop Sheen, hundreds of talks by Bishop Sheen on um, YouTube. Uh, Scott Hahn, uh, Dr. John Bergsma, Steve Wood, uh, Jeff Cavins, Dr. Brant Petrie. So go on Catholic Publications and their YouTube channel. All these YouTube channels are free. All this is available out there. So don't waste your time with a lot of the other things that are out there on YouTube and other things, but focus on these good, incredible uh, talks that are available for free and listen to them when you're driving in the car, just you know, put them on, listen to them. When you're doing the dishes, uh, get the headset. When you're vacuuming, listen to these things to keep growing in our faith this coming year. And um, so those are the three things. Uh, de have devotion to St. Joseph, consecrate yourself, read one book a week, and listen and make use of the good things that are out there on the internet and on social media to be able to enrich your faith, to bring you closer to God this coming year. And God bless you. Have a happy, healthy, and holy new year.